Well, the main connection is the fact that my mother was a contemporary. Madge and Mum were fairly contemporary within a few years. My mother was a dressmaker. Oh, she she worked for for Jacobson. Their names were escapees from Russia, and which she enjoyed. She enjoyed working for them, and you know, and, and in London, of course, you would get all sorts of things from society people to just the ordinary. It would work on on commission that that she did. Do you think she taught any of her skills to Madge Girl? Oh, I don't think so. They were con- Madge would have. She would have been in Canada around about the time that Mum was starting to learn her trade. The only sister that I knew was Aunt Carrie and um, Uncle Elf. Those two I have memories of as a child um, because Mum would take us to Woodford either for the day or whatever. And I, I've got memories of the garden, particularly some of the flowers. The, I remember the uh, irises. In fact, some of the irises that we had at Mitcham were from there. And the Solomon seal, which I brought from Mitcham. There's the offspring, shall we say, <laughs> of those are in this garden as well. I mean, there's a sort of link in that way, seal which I like. I like that sort of feeling that that something's pe- perpetuated in a very odd way. <laughs> so do you think Madra spent much time there? Or do you think it seems like maybe she was in Walthamstow of the family? I think so, certainly. I know that Madge was used to go down in the same way that, that Mum did. And during those, those times, um, they were really just treated as... as yeah, the next generation in the family, which, of course, they were. Yeah. <laughs> My mother used to tell me, and I think it was probably the same with Madge, that when she went to Woodford, they had clothes that she changed into there, which became a young lady for the time she was there, you know. And would be would go to Woodford in working class, yeah, sort of apparel. But they're certainly middle class, without a doubt, because they could afford things like that. They built their own garden. They they with their own hands. This is it. They enjoyed what they did there, and that's. And then I think there's a there's evidence somewhere of Laurie having lived there in in his earlier years. So did you spend much time with Laurie? No, I didn't because I was much considerably younger. I I knew of him and I know that he had the umbrellas. Blushet Grove I knew of that. Mum used to talk about that and I think we went there. I know that we had a couple of our umbrellas because I, I do remember Laurie coming, visiting my mother after Madge had died. I remember that quite distinctly. And I think it was to find more that he himself was wanting to find out more about his mother's parentage. I think he was probably get going around other parts of the family trying to glean information. His information that he had was as sketchy as it is now, really, for us. I don't think she talked about her life in that way. I think people in those circumstances often didn't talk. I remember we talked on the phone and you said about um, how within the family you were unsure about who the who Madge Girl's mother was. My mother didn't know, and I'm sure that was so, and she said that Grandma, that she never knew. Mm-hmm. So do you think what, so Madge didn't even know at the time? who her mother was exactly. I, I think that that is absolutely so. And Mum wrote to Bernardo's and they would not say because they, they don't give that sort of information out. The, the mother was known but not, not acknowledged within the family as the mother because it was an illegitimate time when you just didn't talk or accept those sort of things. You know, my mother said 
that it was supposed, surmised, I suppose, is the best word, that the father was an artist and she, she, she spoke about Forest Hill now. I'm not sure where Forest Hill is, southeast, isn't it? And, um, but it was surmised, I think. Those days were quite different from, <laughs> from these, as you know, Victorian values or otherwise. They didn't admit things. They still supported it. Well, you said that, yeah, the balance between like what society thinks, and actually, really, they didn't. You know, they didn't really you want didn't, to cut her off. No, they wouldn't have done. They, and they obviously didn't. No. But at no time in her life, it seems to me, was she abandoned. There seemed to be an element of support coming from somewhere. She definitely had support. I think she had a good family network. I think without. Well, Laurie Without as that, well, like I don't think she would have, you know, been able to do what she did do. No. What do you remember your mother talking about in terms of um, Reggie passing away and that's effect on? I think family? she was, she was, she spoke about it. Influenza. I was going to say he died in nineteen, didn't he? With a with a flu epidemic. Mum mm. used to talk about that quite a lot. But it obviously did it affected mum lo losing you know, feeling that there was a loss within the family at that time. She spoke about it, I think she thought it was quite tragic, because she was quite young. And I think that uh, she thought it was a tragedy that, that, well, that he'd, he'd, he'd suffered in that way, or had gone in that way. It was a terrible epidemic, in fact. She was on the spiritualist side. Yeah, on the spiritualist side. Do you know anything about that side of her life at all? I can imagine that if you're trying to seek yourself, in other words, you don't know, or you know there's unknowns about your origins, maybe that's what, where it comes from, I don't know. I can imagine it could be. Whether it was the product of the war, First World War or what, I don't know. People seeking, as I say, seeking memories of their lost ones or what. I think she was trying, through her work, whether she got there or not. But I, it has a, a feeling of seeking, I think. There's some fantastic things amongst it. You know, and I haven't, I've only seen a section of it. So do you remember... Um her making her artwork at all. I remember Mum talking about it. Mum it was a very matter of fact sort of person. You know, she 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 didn't like the faces and things. She didn't take to those, shall we say. She was worried by it. I think that this my mother was worried by it. Was she worried for well, marriage or what, worried? Well I don't know whether it was because I was Young, I suppose I didn't sort of think that deeply about it, but I think she just thought that it was a worrying thing that these faces were everywhere. I think she was worried probably for Madge and what had caused them or why. Mum couldn't sort of see the, the why they were all over everything that was done. And they are, aren't they? Sort of in one way or another. Even when they're not that ev evident, there's an element of it. So I can understand Mum worrying for marriage, really. There's a sadness. M Mum saw a sadness in it, you see. And Madge never um, talked to your mother about mm -mm. why or what no, they represented? No. I don't think... So. I, I, Mum never talked about that element. I think because Mum didn't really understand it, I know this sounds odd, but I think she was frightened of it. I see faces in this. Mm. Do you? Although they're not evident, I'm sure that there are faces in this one. So how do you, how do you see her artwork now? It's different. I'm intrigued by it, really. And I only wish that I had known or been associated more with that side, to have been able to to talk to her about it, 
or get her feelings or her, her emotions. I envy Madge's skill with colour. I envy anybody who's relaxed with colour and can use colour yeah. just from here. So Madge exhibited and I think there was part of her that wasn't like totally against that, but then in terms of, say, Laurie finding so much work mm. after she, you know, she was making it for herself. She wasn't really making no, it to she, show No, she anyone. wasn't interested in, in the financial gain from it, was she? It was something that she had to get out of herself, which I think ties up with the spiritual side of it. You know, she, she's look, seeking an outlet from not knowing herself. I think. Did the family kind of keep her work quite a lot? Did, did anyone have it on their walls or...? No, I think it? that a lot of her work was squirrelled squirreled away. So I understand a lot didn't come to light until after she had died. Do you have any uh, favourite pieces of her artwork? No, I, I find it difficult to... I, I think it's all amazing, you know, this is, and the scale, I think that that is one thing that's always intimidated me, and which I find, find incredible, was the scale at which she worked. It obviously had no intimidating element uh, as far as Madge was concerned. The enormous lengths that she coped with, you know, that the big one that you couldn't unroll at the museum. Mm. I think it's wonderful, you know, what she did produce. <laughs>